MS-DOS, 1981. Let's start at the very beginning with MS-DOS. Hitting the market in 1981, this Microsoft Disk Operating System wasn't much to look at, just a black screen with blinking text. But it changed everything. To do anything on your computer, you had to memorize and type specific commands like DIR to see files, or copy to duplicate them. No mouse, no icons, no clicking, just pure text-based navigation. Yet this seemingly harsh system became the go-to choice for early IBM PCs and compatible machines. It ran beloved programs like the spreadsheet giant Lotus 123 and adventure games like Zork. By the decade's end, MS-DOS dominated roughly 80% of the personal computer market, laying the groundwork for Microsoft's empire. Windows 1.0, 1985 in 1985, Microsoft took its first swing at a visual interface with Windows 1.0. The problem was clear. Most people found typing cryptic DOS commands frustrating and intimidating. Windows 1.0 sat on top of DOS and added a graphical layer where you could actually see and click on things. Basic applications like Calculator, Paint, and the Reversi game made their debut. However, the experience was far from smooth. Windows appeared in a rigid tile arrangement. You couldn't stack them or move them around freely. Plus, there were no buttons to minimize or maximize anything. The system crashed frequently, and here's the kicker. You needed a mouse, which most people didn't own yet, since DOS only required a keyboard. Despite its flaws, this was Microsoft's opening move toward user-friendly computing. Windows 2.0, 1987. Two years later, Windows 2.0 arrived with one game-changing improvement, overlapping windows. Suddenly you could layer different programs on top of each other, which became essential as Microsoft Word and Excel entered the scene. Imagine drafting a document in Word while keeping Excel visible in the background, revolutionary for its time. However, this feature sparked a legal battle. Apple claimed Microsoft stole the overlapping window concept from their Macintosh computers and took them to court. Microsoft emerged victorious because Apple had previously partnered with them to develop Mac versions of Word and Excel, giving Microsoft legitimate access to similar design ideas. That's why we still click through overlapping windows today. Windows 3.0-3.1, 1990-1992 Windows 3.0 dropped in 1990 and finally gave Microsoft the breakthrough it needed. This version featured vibrant full-color graphics that made everything look professional and polished. Thanks to Intel's 386 processors becoming standard, computers could now handle more demanding software like CorelDRAW while running multiple programs simultaneously. Then came Windows 3.1 in 1992, bringing intuitive drag-and-drop functionality, beautiful TrueType fonts for better-looking documents, and yes, Solitaire, the ultimate productivity killer. Despite running on a mere one megabyte of RAM, it supported multimedia features and improved networking. Regular families, not just businesses, started buying computers. With three million units sold in its first year, Windows became a household staple. Windows 95, 1995. Windows 95 was a cultural phenomenon. Landing in 1995, it revolutionized personal computing with features we take for granted now. The Start menu gave users a central hub to access everything, while the taskbar showed what was running at a glance. Plug-and-play technology meant you could connect a printer or scanner and have it work instantly, no more hunting for driver disks. The system could handle modern 32-bit applications and came bundled with games like Minesweeper. Internet Explorer made its debut, opening the door to the World Wide Web for millions. Microsoft's aggressive marketing campaign, with TV commercials and the Rolling Stones song Start Me Up, pushed 40 million copies into homes within 12 months. Though the infamous blue screen of death still haunted users, Windows 95 unified the DOS and Windows experience into a single, cohesive platform that defined modern computing. Windows 98, 1998 Windows 98 hit shelves in 1998 as a refinement of its predecessor. Internet Explorer became more reliable, crashing far less during web browsing. The biggest advancement? Universal serial bus support, eliminating the confusion of multiple port types. Now your mouse, keyboard, and printer could all use the same connection. Multi-monitor setups became possible, giving power users and gamers expanded screen real estate. But stability remained an issue. 
In an unforgettable moment, Bill Gates witnessed a blue screen crash during a live CNN demonstration, embarrassing Microsoft on national television. Still, Windows 98 continued pushing computers into households and small businesses everywhere. Windows ME 2000 Windows Millennium Edition launched in 2000 earned a reputation as Microsoft's biggest disaster. The system was notoriously unreliable. Programs would freeze or crash without warning, making simple tasks frustrating. Microsoft did introduce System Restore, a clever feature that let you roll back to a previous working state if something went wrong. Unfortunately, System Restore itself often malfunctioned. Users quickly nicknamed it the Mistake Edition, and it became a cautionary tale about rushing products to market without proper testing. Windows 2000, 2000. Also debuting in 2000, but aimed at corporate environments, Windows 2000 told a different story. Built on Microsoft's rock-solid NT kernel, it prioritized stability and security above flashy features. Active Directory transformed how IT departments managed networks and user accounts. Running comfortably on 64 megabytes of RAM, it became the preferred choice for servers and office workstations. While home users barely noticed it, Windows 2000 established the technical backbone that would support future mainstream releases. Windows XP 2001 Windows XP arrived in 2001 and captured hearts worldwide. Built on that reliable NT foundation, it combined rock-solid stability with a friendly, colorful interface. Boot times shortened dramatically, and hardware detection improved significantly. Plugging in new devices rarely caused problems anymore. Features like fast user switching and the redesigned start menu made daily computing smoother. CD burning became built in, perfect timing, since CDs dominated file sharing. And who could forget that bliss wallpaper, rolling green hills under a perfect blue sky, which became one of the most recognizable images in computing history. Windows XP peaked at over 400 million installations globally. People genuinely loved this version and resisted upgrading for years, even after newer options emerged. Windows Vista, 2007 Windows Vista launched in 2007 with grand ambitions. The Aero interface brought stunning transparent glass effects and smooth 3D window switching animations. User Account Control UAC, aimed to protect users from malware by requesting permission before system changes. Sounds great, right? Not quite. Aero's beauty came at a steep price. It demanded one gigabyte of RAM and dragged even decent computers to a crawl. UAC prompts appeared so frequently they became infuriating rather than helpful. Many older programs simply wouldn't run. Vista had forward-thinking ideas, but the execution fell flat, teaching Microsoft hard lessons about balancing innovation with performance. Windows 7, 2009 Windows 7 emerged in 2009 as Microsoft's redemption story. It preserved Vista's attractive aero visuals, but optimized everything to run buttery smooth on modest hardware. The integrated search bar found files and settings instantly. Pinning favorite programs to the taskbar kept them one click away. The snap feature let you drag windows to screen edges for automatic half-screen sizing, perfect for side-by-side -side work. Reliable, fast, and problem-free, Windows 7 moved over 600 million licenses and dominated the market for years. Users loved it so deeply that many clung to it long past its prime. Windows 8, 2012 Windows 8 debuted in 2012 and immediately divided users. Microsoft ditched the beloved Start menu entirely, replacing it with a full-screen Start page covered in colorful, information-displaying tiles. This touch-centric design worked wonderfully on tablets and touchscreen devices, but felt completely alien on traditional desktop setups. Navigating with a mouse and keyboard became awkward and unintuitive. Despite being technically fast and secure, the backlash was so severe that Microsoft backpedaled quickly, releasing Windows 8.1 within a year to restore the Start button. The lesson? Radical change without user consideration leads to rejection. Windows 10, 2015. 
Windows 10 launched in 2015, marking Microsoft's triumphant return to form. The familiar start menu returned, blending classic functionality with modern tile elements. Virtual desktops let users organize different workspaces, while Task View made switching between apps effortless. DirectX 12 thrilled gamers with improved graphics performance. Microsoft's free upgrade promotion catapulted adoption, hitting a billion devices by 2020. However, Windows 10 brought headaches too. Forced automatic updates interrupted work at the worst possible times, and occasionally installations would freeze mid-process with that spinning blue screen, spawning countless internet memes. Privacy concerns around data collection also sparked debates. Nevertheless, Windows 10 became the industry standard for nearly 10 years. Windows 11, 2021. Windows 11 rolled out in 2021, giving Windows a contemporary makeover. Rounded corners, gentle shadows, and a centered start menu created a fresh aesthetic. Snap layouts enhanced multitasking by offering preset window arrangements at the hover of your cursor. File Explorer gained tabbed browsing, reducing window clutter when managing files. Gaming performance improved through direct storage and auto HDR, while the Copilot AI assistant pointed toward future possibilities. The catch? Stringent hardware requirements, particularly the TPM 2.0 security chip mandate, excluded countless older but functional computers from upgrading. By 2025, roughly 400 million devices run Windows 11, though many users still prefer Windows 10. Love it or not, Windows 11 represents Microsoft's vision for the coming decade. Deeper AI integration, tighter security, and a more polished user experience. From typing DOS commands in 1981 to conversing with AI assistants today, Microsoft's operating systems have fundamentally shaped how billions of people work, play, and connect. Every version, whether celebrated or criticized, left its mark on computing history. And this journey shows no signs of slowing down.